Hey guys, what's going on? Adam Snyder here with The Homemade Entrepreneur. So in this video, what is Amazon FBA? How to start making a full-time income. I want to show you exactly what Amazon FBA is and how you can start making a full-time income with some tips, tricks, and little hints um, you know, mixed in. So let's just jump right into it and get started. First thing, Amazon FBA. Amazon is the selling platform. FBA is the fulfillment method. Okay, so when somebody says, and I do this all the time, I say I sell on FBA, it's pretty much I sell on Amazon through FBA. But Amazon FBA pretty much stands for fulfillment by Amazon. What that means is Amazon warehouses all your products and ships them to the buyers when they are sold. If it is FBM, which just means fulfilled by merchant, which is you, you ship all the products as they are sold. Okay, so Amazon FBA, FBA fulfilled by Amazon. What do I need to start? Well, you don't need a whole lot. The main things you need to start, you need a smartphone, you need a computer, you need a printer, preferably a laser printer. And the reason I say preferably a laser printer is when you use inkjet, the ink will sometimes smear. And if it smears, it if you are trying to scan a barcode and the barcode is smeared, it won't show up correctly. Okay? Which will it will make it very difficult for your product to show up in Amazon system if they can't scan it. Next thing you need, an Amazon seller account. You can't start selling on Amazon without an Amazon seller account. And obviously, you need money to invest in products. Now, the amount of money you start with is completely up to you. The more money you start with, the more money you can potentially make faster. But you don't need thousands and thousands of dollars to start. If you started with $100, which many people did, many people still do, you can still make money. You can still make it a full-time income. It will just take a little longer. So what are the best scanning apps? This is what I get asked all the time. The best scanning apps out there, whether you are using Android or a smartphone or an uh, Apple product, the best scanning apps. First, it's the Amazon Seller app. Okay, that one. Um, the Amazon Seller app, it comes with your Amazon uh, account. So the account costs, I think it's like $39, $40 per month which it's a small price to pay to be able to sell on that big of a platform. So Amazon seller app, it is free, but it comes with your paid membership with the Amazon um, membership, the Amazon you know, pro account or whatever. Anyway, so uh, that is, in my opinion, the best one because it's the most up to date. The second best, in my opinion, is FBA scan. Um, FBA scan does cost $40 a month. The reason I recommend it is because it has a database that you can download straight to your phone. So when you're out scanning, it will be instantaneously on your phone. You scan the barcode, and before you, you know, you blink, you'll miss it. But it's that fast, okay? Profit Bandit's another good one. Um, that's ten dollars a month. And the last one I'd recommend is Scoutify, and that one comes free with your Inventory Lab account. If you don't know what Inventory Lab is, um, we're going to get to that right here. Inventory Lab. What tools do I recommend? I recommend Inventory Lab. Inventory Lab is a software. Um, so it's a software. You list your products through Inventory Lab. So you set your, your buy cost, your sell price, your location, where you bought it from, the date you bought it. You can do expiration dates if you're doing food or health and personal care or beauty products. Um, so it's a great tool to have because you can go back to the end of the year, print everything out, and you can send that off to your accountant, and he can just do or she can do their work. So I really like it. highly recommend it. Anything I mentioned in this video, also there will be links in the description box below if you want to go check them out. Two other tools, Keepa and Camel, Camel, Camel. Um, I know both of those are odd names. Keepa and Camel, 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 or CCC as many people call it. Um, they're just, okay, not just, these are graphs, these are, they're showing you the past history of a product. 
the reason I recommend the past history of a product is because if you only see the current Amazon price, current Amazon sales rank, you only see that, the snapshot in time, okay? You don't see everything that's happened up until then. So if the the price um, just you know spiked, it went up because there's only one seller, you wouldn't know that unless you look at the, the past history. That's where Keepa and Camel 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 come in. Um, with the Amazon Seller app, you do not, so right here with the Amazon Seller app, you do not get the option to be able to see Keepa or Camel Camel Camel. With FBA Scan and Profit Bandit, you do. You have those options. You can see those with the touch of a button. With Scoutify, I'm not really sure. I've only used it for about a week, and that was about a year and a half ago. So I do not know much about Scoutify. It's just free with your Inventory Lab account. What other tools do I recommend? I recommend a barcode scanner. And the barcode scanner, um, there's actually two different ones. One is the KDCI uh, 200i, which is a handheld barcode scanner that you connect to your phone and you scan products that way. Um, the other barcode scanner that I recommend is a Motorola Symbol. Um, these are a little bit more expensive, but they're very hev heavy duty. These are what most retail stores use um, as their barcode scanners of choice. The nice thing about having a barcode scanner is you hook it up to your computer, and when you are ready to list products, you don't type in the, the UPC by hand. You scan it with the barcode scanner, and it goes instantly into your computer. If you use an inventory lab, it, it's just seamless integration. It's very easy. I highly recommend it. Another thing is a Dymo Label Writer 450 Turbo, or better. Um, you can get like the, well, I'm not saying all the names, but any Dymo products um, are usually pretty good, especially the newer ones. Even if you just got the regular regular 450, um, you'd still be fine. Um, they have some dual printers as well. Um, you can get the, the Dymo 4XL, which does larger um larger labels but that's not really necessary um, but I would highly recommend the label writer another thing highly recommend label removers um, the reason I say label removers is because anytime you put anytime you buy a product from a retail store um, if it's on sale it might or it's on clearance it might have a, a price sticker on it if it does you want to get it off um, there are Scotty peelers um, that are they're like eight to ten dollars or something. You get three of them or four of them. They work really well. Okay, I highly recommend those. Also recommend a three-inch tape gun. The reason I say a three-inch tape gun is because I don't remember the exact dimension of regular um, packing tape. I think it's like an inch and a half or two inches or something like that. But with that, if you tape a seam on a box, you will have to do at least two, probably three different uh, different sections of tape just to cover a seam. With a three-inch tape gun and with a three-inch tape roll, all you need is one row of tape, and that's it. That will get you um, that will get the whole seam covered, and it will work just fine. Uh, the last tool I highly recommend, which you do uh, you do need, um, I, I know people that have got around it by just taking their boxes to uh, UPS or FedEx, weighing it, and then bringing it back home, but that's a whole lot of work. But I recommend a smart scale. Smart scale, um, they're, the one I rec recommend is only like, I think it's like $30, um, very inexpensive. And it holds up to 110 pounds, so uh, definitely a good option. Also, your new best friend will be Jungle Scout. The reason I say your new best friend will be Jungle Scout because they offer two free things that you uh, you should use, you should utilize. First thing is the free bestseller rank table, and it's updated very often I think it's updated monthly or bought or every other month I don't remember uh, but even if it's updated every you know four months it's still um, 
very close to uh, being 100 percent accurate so it's it's a it just tells you the the best seller rank so where you want to be um if you want to see let's say two sales of that product per day what should the best seller rank be also the free sales estimator this is a tool you can go to junglescout.com forward slash estimator it's a great tool to use you simply click on the category that you want to look into you type in the best seller rank and it will tell you roughly how many products will sell per month and in my opinion it is the world's best chrome extension as far as finding more profitable products um, especially if you get into wholesale private label um, it's a great choice so where do I start first every store can be profitable don't think that because you don't have the you know big sales stores you don't have the liquidation you know uh, companies in your town city you know it doesn't mean you're not gonna make money big box stores are where I do most of my shopping um, even online mom and pop shops they do very well because usually mom and pop shops uh, you know the second hand um, you know small town stores those ones a lot of times they will negotiate prices if you find something you really want and you're gonna buy them out I guarantee you they will negotiate the price for you because they're all about that small town community vibe so um, definitely a great place to go thrift stores and pawn shops are also good um, thrift stores are great because people donate this stuff because of that usually the prices are cheaper with pawn shops a lot of these items that they have are things people have pawned people have um, you know put up to get some money you know never came back to get uh, people just sold um, maybe the pawn shop picked it up doing a you know there's so many ways they can pick them up okay so sometimes they don't know exactly what they have the prices fluctuate all the time usually a pawn shop will go directly to eBay, see what the price is going for on eBay, and that's what they're gonna be. That's what they're gonna mark as their uh, competition. So because of that, they they make it very competitive to eBay prices. But as we all know, eBay and Amazon are two completely different animals. eBay usually has cheaper products. Okay. With that said, Amazon usually has more expensive products. Because of that, you can price your items higher which makes pawn shops a great place to source. Another thing, scan everything, okay? This is where most people mess up, is they only scan certain things. I do a lot of toys. I'm not saying you need to go buy, you know, thousands and thousands of toys, because in most cases, the toys aren't gonna be as profitable as you want them to be. For most of my toys that I buy, I'm anything over 30% return on investment, so I'll buy a toy for $10 to make $3. That's fine with me. Most people don't, you know, operate under that same uh, mentality. That's no big deal, okay? Don't just scan clearance items. Full price items can still be profitable. Like I just mentioned, I buy a lot of $10 toys. $10 is full price. I buy a lot of toys at Walmart, Target, Toys R Us, places like that. And $10 could be a full price item. And I will still buy it because it's still profitable. Find the products that you are allowed to sell okay, and take notes of restricted brands and categories. I say this because if you don't know what you can and can't sell, then it makes it very hard for somebody like myself or anyone else to give you any advice as to where to go source, what products to scan, um, you know, things like that. Because if you can't sell any toys, then it makes it very difficult for me to say, hey, go scan toys. Or if you can't sell, you know, shoes, Obviously, I'm not going to tell you to go to, you know, Famous Footwear or Foot Locker or Macy's or, you know, Marshall's and go buy shoes because you can't sell them, okay? So figure out what products you can and can't sell and stick to the ones that you can. Just take note of the ones that you can't, and when you see them, just don't bother with them. Don't pick them up. Don't scan them. Just pass them right by. Find ways to get products cheaper. I know this is the goal for everybody, but most people don't do it right. One thing you need to understand, discounted gift cards are a great way to make a little extra money. I go to raise.com and I also buy them off of eBay. Um, and you can buy them off Craigslist and locally as well, but you can get more off raise.com. The nice thing about raise is I can get 
you know, gift cards to Ross for, you know, 18, maybe the, the biggest one I ever got, I think to Ross was like 26, 27% off. Um, so you can get some great deals on those. So if it's 25% off, let's just, you know, round number and it's a hundred dollar gift card, you would pay $75 for it. You know, great deal. You get 25 extra dollars. So another thing, cash back and rebate. Um, so these are usually on the site. So usually what I do is I go to a website called topcashback.com. I will uh, click the link through there. So I'll get 1% back on my, my purchase of my raise.com gift card. When I buy my gift cards, I buy those with a credit card that gives me 2% back or it will pay me air miles. Okay. In addition to that, when I go to the stores, I usually try to get used coupons. And a lot of times I will go to Retail Me Not, and that's where I get maybe a 10% off, maybe a you know $10 off 50, you know, things like that. And every little bit does add up. So find ways to get products cheaper. I guarantee you're gonna make more money. What product should I scan? Another question I get asked all the time. And it's hard to answer because I don't know really what you're interested in. What are your hobbies? What are your kids' hobbies? The reason I say both of those is because for myself, I love to do, uh, love all electronics. I used to be a computer technician. I would rebuild computers. And because of that, I used to do a lot with computers. I used to buy and sell computers. Now, my kids are getting older. I have a three and an eight year old. And because of that, we do a lot of toys. We go to a lot of toy stores. We go to a lot of, you know, uh, we do a lot of stuff with Nerf guns, um, little hobbyist things, you know, drones, remote control cars. You know, it, you know, the list really goes on and on. Because of that, I'm looking at a lot of stuff that my kids are interested in. Because not only am I, you know, in the stores sourcing or online sourcing. I can find stuff for them, and if I'm in the store, the great thing about having kids inside your store, or inside a store, is that if they're interested in the stuff you're looking at, they're gonna just stand there and just be, you know, oohing and on over everything while you're making money. Okay, so you're watching your kids and you're making money. How great is that? What stores do you have around you? Do you have toy stores, uh, household goods, pet stores, farming supplies? Um, you know, maybe just a Walmart, whatever it is, what stores do you have around you? Because that's where you should start scanning. It doesn't matter if you're two hours away from a store, you have something around you. It could be a grocery store. It could be a little health and beauty store. It could be a clothing store, retail store, whatever it is. Go inside there. Just start scanning stuff because that's the first step into making money. You need to know, especially you need to know how to read the app, how to know what the ranking is. You know, if it's profitable or not, understand the shipping costs, everything that goes into making that decision as to buying or not. Scan everything that you see because scanning gives you the numbers to go off of. Okay, so if you see an item, let's say it's at Walmart, most, most people have a Walmart close to them or inside their town. If you have a Walmart, go into Walmart, just scan, scan, scan everything. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's toys, doesn't matter if it's, you know, clothing, you know, shoes, kitchen products, um, you know, electronics, food, whatever. Just get a feel for the app. Make sure that you understand how to read it. Make sure you understand if that item is going to be profitable or not. In some cases, you can't sell certain products because of that. That's where you want to go and actually look at the, the products that you can sell and scan inside those categories. Things to avoid. First off, I'd recommend highly counterfeit items and categories. Avoid those, just 100%. Um, you know, I say that, but I still sell Nike shoes. Um, they are very profitable for me, so I still sell them. I'm just very um, cautious about what I sell. Make sure I check them out completely. And when I pack a shipment, I actually have a camera that sits overhead so I can actually open up the box. Show the camera exactly what the item is to make sure if it does come back to me that I can show Amazon, you know, this was the product I sent. Maybe the product that I get back is not the exact same one, whatever it is. And so at least they have something to go off of. 
that's not something most people do. Most people don't keep a running camera straight over their head, and that's no big deal. Uh, I do it just because I've been saved by it, and so I'm going to con continue to do it. Now, avoid sending used products as new. This happens all the time. So, some of my videos that I do, I do put up videos about uh, me going to a thrift store buying products and saying that I'm going to sell it as new. In almost every one of those situations, somebody says you can't sell thrift store items as new because they are secondhand items. Well, technically, if you were to buy a item from a retail store such as Walmart, Walmart didn't get that item brand new either. They bought it from somebody else. Okay, Walmart is a retailer. They're not a wholesaler. So if you think of that in terms of if you are the second owner, then it's then it's technically a secondhand item, and that would be used. Uh, almost everything people are buying and selling is used. But with that said, when I send in a product from a thrift store, I check it out completely. In many cases, I have to open up the box. Okay, if I have to open up the box and I can get it back exactly how it is in brand new condition, I'm gonna sell it as new. If I open up the box and I tear it just a little bit, just the slightest, it is like new. If I open up the box and pieces start falling out, it is like new. As long as I can put, get all the pieces and put them all back in. If I open up the box and it's missing something, I'm not going to sell it. Even though it could be in a box, maybe, um, maybe it's a puzzle or something and the puzzle is open, but, or the box is open, but inside... The entire puzzle is in a in a poly bag. That's usually how they come brand new. If that's the case, it's still not new because the box has been opened. And if you can tell, don't send it in as new. Most items that I send in as new that I get from a, a retail or from a thrift store or a pawn shop, they you can tell they are new, brand new. They smell new, everything. Okay, you really have to use your judgment on this one. I know. You know, I get a lot of comments about, is it new, is it used? And you really have to use your own judgment. If you want to avoid getting your account suspended, don't sell items that are used, but you're going to sell them as new. Okay? So that's all I'm going to say with that. If you have a question, you can put it in the comment section below. But like I said, I don't, I don't really want to address all that stuff because it really comes down to what is your, um, what is your understanding of the Amazon um, of the Amazon condition. Amazon lays it all out on the line. You know, this is the condition. This is how you need to address it. And there's really no gray area. But the way you, so the way you need to look at as, do you abide by their terms? If you do, great. If not, you need to adjust your strategy. Next thing, don't overbuy. When I say this, uh, go, going back to the whole keep a chart, is if you are buying items because they just spiked, their price spiked, their ranking spiked, you know, maybe it was something, um, you know, Ellen or Oprah was given away or, you know, some Donald Trump was given away this product. And so all of a sudden it just had a big, you know, following. If that's the case and people just flooded Amazon to buy it. The ranking would just skyrocket because of that. You don't want to overbuy because you saw the ranking at its best. You want to look to see what's the average, what's the worst. Is this item still going to sell? Okay. Another thing to avoid is to avoid paying sales tax. Now, when I say avoid it, I'm not saying, you know, just don't pay it. I'm saying get a resale license or permit. By doing that, you avoid paying sales tax up front okay, at the retail store. Doesn't mean you don't have to pay something later on. It just means at that time you avoid paying that tax. Usually you do get a better deal in the end. Um, I know here in Washington State, um, you know, it's like 8.2%. And then at the end of the year, um, I think I pay like, it's like it's, on, it's under 1%, whatever the, the excise tax is. Anyway, I'm not getting to that, but, you know, avoid that if you can, because you can make a little extra money that way. Holding products before shipment. This is a big issue that I've seen so many people make. Um, a lot of people just buy, buy, buy. That's all they do. They never send it off because they're waiting for the big shipment. They're waiting for, you know, having a room full of inventory. 
what usually happens is as soon as they start listing, they get overwhelmed. When it comes to boxing the, the inventory up, they get extremely overwhelmed. And when it comes to putting it all, you know, in their car or, you know, getting, uh, getting UPS or FedEx, come pick it up. They get overwhelmed with that as well. Okay. Just as soon as you get items, you got 20, 30, maybe a hundred items, send it off, get it off to Amazon as fast as possible. Cause it's not making money sitting there in your living room, in your kitchen, in your garage, in your office, wherever you have it, just get it to Amazon as fast as possible. Also listing under the wrong item. This happens all the time because a lot of times it will be an old listing. Maybe the person that created the listing is the actual manufacturer. That's the case. They will change it. It might still have the same UPC, but now they're changing the picture. They're going to change the description, maybe some of the features, whatever it is. This is a new product. So don't list your old items under a new product listing. You got to find the right listing. If it's not there, don't sell it or sell it on eBay. So how to make $5,000 a month. Uh, like I said in the beginning of this video, how to make a full-time income on Amazon FBA. Most people consider $5,000 a month a full-time income. A lot of people will say it's a, it's a lot less than that. Some people say it's more. But the majority of people say $5,000 is a respectable full-time income. So I want to say, I just want to show you how you can make $5,000 a month. Now, this, this is my, you need to spend, send, and repeat. It's that simple. You spend your money, you send in your products, you repeat the process, and just keep going. So in order to make $5,000, you technically need to make, spend $4,000 per month or in the first two weeks to reach that goal. And that's with a 50% return on investment. So what that means is if in two weeks you were to sell out your $4,000 in inventory, you'd make $2,000 profit. That's 50%. If you take that $4,000 initial investment plus your $2,000 profit, you have $6,000 in total spending power. Okay, so now you take that $6,000 for the next two weeks and you turn that into another 50% return on investment, which would be $3,000. So now you got $2,000 in the first two weeks, $3,000 in the second two weeks. There you got your $5,000 a month. But now you got to take it and you got to start all over with your $4,000. Okay. So it's just simple math. Now, that doesn't take into account shipping, supplies, gas, and unsold inventory. Unsold inventory is the big one here. Because we're going off the assumption that you're making 50% return on investment and 100% of your inventory is selling within those two weeks. If it doesn't, your numbers will be off. Okay. And keep going. Spend, send, repeat. Tips for long-term success. First, don't compete against Amazon. When you're first starting out, don't compete against Amazon because they are, it's their backyard. If they want to drop their price, if they want to cut their price in half, you know, charge a dollar for it, penny, whatever it is, they can do whatever they want. And you can't do a thing about it except for keep losing money with them. So don't compete against them, especially early on. Don't sell items you don't know. If you have a you know Gucci purse, don't sell it because I guarantee you, you're not 100% sure or you don't know if that's 100% authentic. So now, if you bought it from Gucci or from you know one of those retail stores, yeah, it's probably 100% authentic, but you never know. Also, don't sell electronics if you have no clue how they work. I talk about selling cameras all the time. It's because I know how they work. I use them on a daily basis. I would not sell them if I didn't know how to, you know, operate the camera, how to turn it on, how to charge a battery, how to, you know, use all the different features that they come with. Okay, sell products you know. Now, I know that purse example was a horrible example, but just bear with me. Um, diversify your business. And I say diversify in many ways, such as your products. So if you're buying toys, great. Buy toys, buy kitchen items, buy tools, buy clothing, buy shoes, buy food, buy health and personal care items, whatever it is. Diversify your business into multiple different categories, multiple different products. So if you're buying, you know, toys, let's say you're going to buy a Power Ranger and you're going to buy a, a Ninja Turtle and you're going to buy a remote control car and a baseball and a soccer ball and a football and you just keep going. So many different products, so many different categories, but also different source, sourcing methods. 
if you only do retail arbitrage, mix in online arbitrage, mix in thrifting, mix in, mix in pawn shops, mix in wholesale, mix in private label, mix in liquidation pallets. Just mix it all up. Okay, diversify. Another tip, liquidate to turn inventory. Now, I like to use the car dealership mentality that anything on your books over 90 days is just bad. It's just bad business. You want to sell all your inventory. You want to move inventory. Now, with cars, obviously, you're dealing with a little bit or a lot bigger margins. But with inventory, you have a lot more product. So you want to liquidate your inventory if it's sitting there after, usually after like 60, 70 days, you want to start to liquidate, whether it means you cut your prices down a little bit to, to the break-even point, or even if you have to take a loss. You want to take your money and move on, okay? Utilize the repricer. I like to use Be Cool. It's very inexpensive, and it, in my opinion, it works just as good as App Eagle. Um, there's so many other ones out there. Uh, App Eagle is probably one of the bigger ones. Um, most people say they are the best. They are the most expensive, I believe. Um, and yes, they do offer a lot of stuff, but a lot of things that you might not necessarily need. I don't need somebody. I don't need an app to reprice every minute or every 15 minutes. I'd be perfectly fine with an app that just like be cool. I think it only does every hour, every half hour, or something like that, which is fine with me. I don't want to lose money. Uh, I'm here to make money. Next thing, make this a business by hiring people. Hire the right people. You know, whether you get an accountant, whether you get a lawyer, whether you get uh, somebody to help you pack and prep your inventory, um, somebody to help you, you know, source, whatever it is. Hire people. Make this an actual business. And expand. Use alternative sourcing methods. I talked about this by diversifying your business up above, but also expand. I say expand. Expand into different markets. Um, if you are going to buy, you know, a product from a wholesaler, great. Uh, you know, buy from more wholesalers. If you're going to buy a private label product, maybe get into two, three, four, five, ten, whatever it is, expand. Maybe you're going to go a completely different route and you're going to expand into different markets. Maybe not just the U.S. market, maybe Mexico, maybe Canada, maybe uh, you're going to go over to Germany and U.K., whatever it is, expand. Where to get more information? Here's my little plug. Um, uh, you can go, I have a bunch of Amazon FBA business, so do so many other people. Check those out, they're free, okay? Go to, you can check out my Amazon FBA training guide that will be in the link to, link box below, description box below. Um, the Homemade Entrepreneur Exclusive Membership Group. Um, it's $11.99. Uh, you get you know, almost daily uh, emails. Uh, that's a great thing to get into. I talk a lot about Amazon FBA, as long as other businesses as well, other passive income streams, and you know, so on. Another one, two of the biggest uh, Amazon FBA Facebook groups out there that I believe and are you know quality groups. One is Amazon FBA Rockstars. Um, that's a great one. And FBA Masters. I'll link to both of those below. Make sure you check those out as well. I think both of them are up over 20,000 members. Um, I know the Rockstars are, and I believe FBA Masters is as well, or they're close. So go check them out. Both of them are great. And that's about it. If you guys have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. Make sure you click that button. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. You know, there's some videos there. Make sure you watch those if you haven't already. And like I said, if you have any questions, put that in the comment section below. Love to hear what you have to say, and I'll talk to you guys very soon.